Welcome to the GroundAware User Interface Training. GroundAware's user interface is browser-based and is accessible on desktops and mobile devices. In this video training, you will learn about the basic interface controls, alarm behavior, adding alarm zones, modifying existing alarm zones, adding silent zones, and using the violation logger. Let's begin by exploring the interface and the basic controls. The interface has an intuitive Google Maps look and feel, with various controls positioned around the edges of the map window. In the map window, you can see the area that is being monitored, and you can see an icon that indicates the position of the radar with a cone, indicated by these blue lines, that shows the radar's field of view. These curved lines away from the radar indicate steps of 500 meters from the center of the radar. So you have 500 meters, 1,000 meters, 1,500 meters, and so on. Notice how the border of the interface is flashing red and yellow. This indicates that an alarm zone has just been violated. Now let's take a look at how to modify the map view. In the upper left of the screen, you will see the map and satellite buttons. These change how the map is displayed. Click the map button and see how the interface changes. You can also activate the terrain display option in this view. You will only notice some subtle terrain shading in this current view as the area being monitored is relatively flat. Clicking on the satellite button returns you to the satellite image view. You can also enable labels to show street names and other types of labels. Immediately below the map and satellite buttons are the alarm volume controls. You can use the plus and minus to increase and decrease the volume of the alarm. And you also have the ability to mute and unmute the alarm with this button. Immediately to the right of the map and volume buttons is the track information dialog. The small yellow and orange squares you see on the screen are items being tracked by the system. We are simply calling these tracks. When you click on a track, the track's information dialog displays information about the selected track. Now let's continue to the center of the screen. You will see a dialog titled Automatic Camera Slewing. This is where you enable or disable the slewing of cameras. You can minimize this dialog if desired. Further to the right, you will find the Load Admin Tools button. And directly below that, you will see the Camera Feeds selection area. When you select the camera feeds, they appear to the right of the map area. To increase or decrease the size of these camera feeds, place the cursor over the divider between the feeds in the map, depress and hold the left mouse button, and then drag to resize the camera feed area. Continuing down the right side of the map window, you will see the Advanced Tools. The Advanced Tools are used to create zones and modify their settings, as well as provide access to the Violations Logger. Moving further down the right side of the user interface, you will find plus and minus buttons. These are the zoom buttons for the map window. At the bottom right is the time window selection controls. The time window shows you the duration of time that you are viewing in the map view. Currently, it is showing five seconds of tracks from zero seconds ago. You can adjust the time window's range by left clicking, holding, and then dragging on the time window controls. Let's drag out the control for the end of the time window to show 30 seconds of tracks. And you can now observe that the displayed tracks show a longer trail. You can also slide the control for the beginning of the time window range. So for instance, you can show 20 seconds of tracks from 10 seconds ago. Now let's put those back where they were 
and we can move ahead and talk about alarm behavior. Let's take a look at this alarm zone. You will notice that it is highlighted blue. This is because the zone is currently selected. Let's click off of that zone to deselect it. The border and shading of a zone tells you something about what's going on with that zone. Currently, this zone's border is changing between green and red. When it's green, it's not being violated. When it is being violated, it turns red. These zones, for example, are not being violated. You will see another zone over here which is outlined with a black border. The black border indicates that this is a silent zone. You can set up silent zones to define areas where you do not want to have any alarms. There is another zone here without a border. A zone without a border has not been assigned any rules for when it should trigger, so this zone is not currently active. In addition to the zones, you will see this blue circle here. In addition to the automatic camera slewing, you have the Camera Focused Location tool. And you can left-click, hold, and drag on that to manually slew the cameras. So, while the cameras may automatically slew based on the slewing setting, if you need to slew them to a particular position, you can do that manually. Now let's talk about adding alarm zones. Adding alarm zones involves a few simple steps. On the advanced tools, you have three icons. These are the Stop Drawing, Add Alarm Zone, and Add Silent Zone buttons. To add a zone, click the Add Alarm Zone button. Next, draw a polygon on the map where you would like an alarm zone placed. You do that by left-clicking and releasing on the first corner of the zone, and then moving your cursor to define the first side of the polygon, then left-click and release again, and move your cursor to define the next side of the polygon. Left-click and release again, and continue to draw. You can draw a square, a rectangle, or any polygon you need to define an alarm zone. To close your polygon, draw a connecting line to the starting point of your zone, and double-click. Now the alarm zone area has been defined, and you will be prompted to name your zone. Let's name this My Alarm Zone, and press OK to confirm. Let's select the new alarm zone with a left click, and set some rules for that zone. Click on the View Rules button. By default, alarm zones are set up to be enabled every day of the week, all day long. Let's select the current rule and edit that rule. You can see here that all of the days are highlighted in green. You can click on a day to disable or enable the day, and you can change the start and end times that the zone is active. Good. Click Save to confirm your changes and close the dialog. You can further modify a zone by selecting the zone, then moving over to the Advanced Tools and choosing Alarm Classes. These are the types of tracks that will trigger the alarm zone. You can also set specific headings from which tracks entering the zone will trigger. For instance, you can set a zone to trigger a violation if entered from the west, or the east, or the south, or the north. In addition to setting direction of entry for violations, you can also set the kind of responses an alarm will have, such as logging to a file, sending an email, and automatically slewing the cameras. As you can see, there are several parameters you can customize for each alarm zone. If you want to remove an alarm zone, first make sure the zone is selected, and then click on the Remove Zone button. Now let's look at the Silent Zone. You start drawing a Silent Zone by clicking the Silent Zone button. 
Just like with the alarm zone, you left click, release, draw an edge, and then left click, release, and draw another, and continue to draw your zone. Close the zone with a double click. You'll be prompted to add a name for the silent zone you just created. Let's call this My Silent Zone and click OK to confirm. You can now see that the new zone is defined by a black border and that the zone is silent. If you select a silent zone, you do not get some of the parameters you would with a regular alarm zone. Click on the Remove Zone button to remove the silent zone. Now that you've learned how to set up alarm zones and silent zones, let's take a look at the Violations Logger. You can view all violations by pressing the View All Violations button, or you can view violations for a single zone by first selecting that zone, in which case you'll see the button change to View Zone Violations. Let's go ahead and deselect that zone and click the View All Violations button. This brings up the Violations page, which is automatically generated. It lists all the recent violations. You can press the Next Page button to see previous violations. Let's select the violation at the top of the list, the most recent violation. Then you are presented with the alarm zone that has been violated. Information about the violation is displayed in the upper left. You also get track information. Over to the right, you can press the Play Violations button to view the path of the track that violated the alarm zone. While the track of the violation is playing, you can view the corresponding camera data in the upper right. You can also enable or disable cameras, depending on which one offers the best view of the track. Now that you have observed the violation, you can add information about it using the View Slash Edit Information button. This is where you can assign a status to the violation. By default, it will be set to Not Reviewed. You can set the status to Threat, Undecided, Non-Threatening, Nuisance, or Not Reviewed. Let's set the status for this violation to non-threatening and add a comment that this violation was a car and press save to confirm our entries. Now you can close the violations logger, which opened in a new browser window, and return to the GroundAware interface, where you can continue to view the zones GroundAware is monitoring. This completes the GroundAware user interface training. Thanks for watching. For more information about using GroundAware, please contact Sally Watts at 256 713 5742 or at sally.watts at owlnose.com.